All right, so first thing now, normally once you go into Microsoft Word, um, and you go to insert, select shape, you will see a range of shapes for flowchart. So everything is basically here. So you go to shape, and then select flowchart, and you can just click, if you hover over each, you will see what it is. So I'm looking for an oval. So this now is start. Good. Then now we're going to transition. So as I say, you must use your arrows. Your arrows must have. Then now we are going to have our parallelogram, which is going to show this part. I was saying before, you have the option. You have the option of writing the two in the box. So in here, I could have write, enter, um, read, and hours work. Good. Then, uh, and in it, I can also have the same thing, which is read, um, read, and read our. So that's the two. That's this part right here. So we're reading that part. Good. Then now we are going to move down to these two calculations here. Good. Now, once it is that we have calculations, we said that we use the rectangle. So you could have two separate boxes or you can just use one. It depends on what you want. So I'm going to have here basic, just like they have basic k is equal to rate times 40. And then also now you have O time is equal to hours work minus 40. So that now will take in the calculations right there. So that's the, these two calculations, good. So now we need to move on now to our if statement. I would say that once it is that you see if, for, or was, you use a diamond. Have our diamond, and in the diamond, as I said before, let me bring over this little bit. All right, good. So here now, in the in the diamond, you can write it as a question, or you can write back the same. So you could have is O time equals to zero. Good. You can structure it like that, or you can basically write it back as you have it in your algorithm. Right. So here now, coming from this, you need a true and you need a false. Good. So let me get the next arrow. And you must label your arrows. So coming from this side, 
this is going to be true. And from this side, this is going to be false. So let me use now text box to just draw and write that in. So this part is false. And as I say, you can use pause or two, or you can use yes or no. It's the same thing. And this one is true. All right, good. So here, if O time is greater than zero, which means that this con this is what will happen if the condition is true. This is what will happen if the condition is false. So to the true section, we are going to write this calculation using a rectangle. Let me draw it from this side also. So let me put in the two rectangles. So we're going to put in the calculations here. So first one, the true part, which is wages right here. So if it is that your wages, the overtime is greater than zero, then wages equals to basic pay plus overtime, overtime times two times the rate. All right, for persons who do accounts, that's payroll right there. However, if it is that it's not, then this calculation should be done. Good. Then now you have your end if we all put wages and then our um, algorithm comes to an end. So right here, what I was saying is that if you have print wages coming from this, if I have print, print wages coming from this shape, it means that wages would only be outputted if the condition is false. In the same breath, if I have wages outputting from this shape, it would only output if the condition is true. And that's not what is supposed to happen. Regardless of the condition being true or false, at the end or outside of the selection construct, which is the if statement, it is supposed to output a value. Good. So if the condition is true, calculate the wage, output it. If the condition is false, calculate the wage, output it. Right? So regardless of wage is supposed to be outputted. All right, so let's connect these two now. So what we're going to do, let me let this see if I can find it. Make it be the same length as that one. So right here now we're using a connector to connect these two here. And I say in this case, you just think about your connector as your end if right here. Good. So coming from your connector now, this is where you're going to output. So coming from this, so we, we, we finish checking whether it is that our overtime is greater than or less than zero. So now we need to output wage and then stop. So if it is that we're going to output, we use our lean rectangle, otherwise known as your parallelogram. See how me do that? Lean rectangle, otherwise known as. It's not parallelogram, you know, otherwise known as. So here now we are going to have print wage. Good. After you print wage now, then you are going to have Thank you. 
So we're going to add stop to this. And that would be soup. All right, stop. So let's minimize to see if it is that we can see. Yes, everything. It's a bit small, but that is how your flow chart would be looking from that mm. algorithm right there. All right, so I'm going to revise um, a little bit of pseudocode, and then we're also going to look on the flow chart. Now, the flow chart aspect, you don't necessarily have to do the algorithm to do the flow chart. If you understand the concept of problem solving, you can look on the problem and then move straight into your flow chart. But because I want to recap, then we're going to do both. So here we have our first question. It says to write a pseudocode to prompt the user. So that is important. So it says to prompt the user to input the name of a video tape. The date it was borrowed. So that is important. What's this on video? The date it was borrowed. Go back. The rental fee charge and the amount paid in. Now, based on what we um, highlighted right there, we know exactly what it is we're going to ask the user to enter and what is it we need to store in different variable names at that point. It says here to compute the amount of money, so that's the next variable that we need, the amount of money due to back to the borrower and output it with a suitable label good so right here remember we would have calculated the amount in. so our is that we the basic borrow the rental fee charge so let's say for instance you are borrowing um you want know, movie what is out now um no movie out now so so let's say you're going to borrow the movie um so and then they're going to charge you $20 for the rental fee. And you gave the person $50. You are going to calculate now how much change they're supposed to get. Right? And then you're supposed to output that using suitable labels. So here, based on what we highlighted, we need the name of the video tape, so that's one variable name. The date it was borrowed, that's two variable names. And the second variable name there. The rental fee charge, that's number three. The amount paid in, that's number four. The amount of money that is due back, same thing as change. So we have five variables that we're going to use in this algorithm. All right, so let's get started. So we say the first thing that you need once it is that you are writing your algorithm or when we transition into program implementation is the name of your program slash algorithm. So in this case, because it is for a video rental system, we're going to name it as such. So that's video rental. Then we're going to move into our declaration, which means that we're going to sell when we move into program implementation, we are basically telling the system or the compiler the names that it needs to look out for that we're going to use throughout our algorithm, the name we're going to use throughout our program. So here it says from the user for the name of the video tape. Now you can't name video name. That in itself is incorrect and when you move from algorithm development into program implementation this will be considered as two different variable names once you have a space in between and there's no comma more than likely what you're going to get is an error message so it's either you're going to merge it as one 
or you use an underscore to merge it. Or you can shorten it on um, VName or whatever it is that you would want to use. And it's best to use shorter names so that you can remember and it, and it doesn't feel tedious while you're typing your program. All right, so video name. All right, the date it was borrowed, so let's use date. And rental fee charge. So let's write our fee. Um, so that's our fee right there. Then now we need one for the amount of money paid in. So if we're going to have M paid. So that's money paid in. And we need to have one which is the change. So that's what we're going to have. So we said five variables. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Five variables that we're going to use. After it is that we are finished with our declaration, we need to move to the body of our algorithm. And that is normally enclosed within start and stop. So you're going to have no start. Well, let me just put stop at the same time. So we have start and stop. So in between now, and we are going to indent away, we're going to have our variables or section, sorry. So here we're going to have our prompt statements. Our prompt statements are the instructions that we give to the user telling them what exactly it is that we want them to do. The prompt statements must be clear. After the prompt statement, which means that you would have told the user what to do, you're going to store whatever the user entered in a variable. What do we use for our prompt statement? We use write. Quotation, and the quotation is to state exactly what we want to tell them. So here, we want them to enter the name of a video tape. All right, so here now, what is the variable name for this? They have your read, and the variable name that we created for the name of the video tape would go beside our read statement. So that is video underscore name. Right. So our next from statement, now we need the date it was borrowed. So we use the same word, right? Open bracket, open quote. <laughs> So here now we're just going to read this. All right. Then we're going to now ask again, because we have four different form statements here. So we're going to ask for the rental fee. And we store it there in our fee. All right, so here now, after rental fee now, we are going to ask for the amount paid in. So we're going to have right. So we're going to have enter the amount paid in. All right, so what is the variable name there? We're going to have M paid. And that was simple. So next step now is that we want to calculate change because that is what it says here to compute. So it says compute the amount of money due back to the borrower. So here now, change, right? Change is going to now be equal to whatever money was paid in, and we're going to take the rental fee from that. So change is going to be equal to M paid, 
minus RP. And that's that. So it says now amount due. So I'm not sure if you ever read like receipt where it will say amount due, amount charge, and change due. So basically when it says output with suitable labels, it means that you're not just to output the variable name in itself, you're to output exactly what the variable name is. So in this case, what you are outputting, what you would write is that change due is, and then it would amount the amount that is stored in the variable. So we're going to have write, open bracket, open quotation, the change due to borrow is this, this, comma, and then your variable name, which is change, close bracket. And that would have been your algorithm. Moving on now to the flow chart. All right, so our flow chart, we are not going to focus on the name or the variable name. Basically, what we are going to represent using the diagram is the body of your algorithm. So, we are going to start from start. <laughs> All right, so that's the beginning part, and we're going to flow downwards or to the right, as we said. All right, so after start here, we ask the user to enter some um, values. Now you can draw four different diagrams here, or you can draw one. It is all up to you. So what we use for this now is your parallelogram, AKA your lean square. And as I say, once you're in Microsoft Word, what you do is that you go to insert, go to shape, and in the flow chart section there, you will see all the shapes that you need. So here, you can have four of the shapes because this is going to represent now our input right here. So here, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have read and the variable name. So here I'm going to have read video name. Read date. Read RP. Extend it now. And the last one is read MP. So coming from here now, coming from here, which is our input, we had our calculation right here. So any form of calculation, any form of assignment, um, we are going to use a rectangle for that. So in the rectangle, now we're going to show our computation. So here we're calculating change. So change is equal to MPID. Or you could have calculate change in there, whichever one you prefer. The focus is that you have your labels inside of your shape and you have the correct shape. So you're telling exactly what the shape is doing, right? Well, that's our feed right there. So after we calculated change, we had an output statement. So we're going to use back our parallelogram, aka lean square. So here now we just need to output change. That's what we're going to put in there and say output change. Ooh. Eh? Jesus. Wasn't that interesting? 
um, also change. And then after we also said change, then our program algorithm ended. So we are going to have our oval with that. <laughs> Right, so to the left, no, no, left, I have to the left. To the left, you have your flow chart, and to the side that now we have our algorithm. Good. And then we're going to do the same algorithm for it, and then we're going to move into the flow chart. So this one, we're going to have a nested if. So let's see if we can solve this. So here it says a program is required to read a customer's name. So that is important there. So we're going to read a customer's name, a purchase amount, and a tax code. The tax code has been validated and will be one of the following. So when the user is asked to enter the tax code, they are, to, they are to enter any of these values, which would have been the zero, one, two, or three. It should compute the sales tax and the total amount due and print the customer's name, purchase amount, sales tax, and amount due. Now, let's look on the beginning part. So it says that we're to read the customer's name, that's one variable. A purchase amount, that's a second variable. Tax code, that's our third variable. Then now it says that we are supposed to compute the sales tax, that's a fourth variable, and we are to compute the amount due, that's number five. Then now it says that we are of the five variables, we need to output the customer's name, that's one, the purchase amount, two, sales tax, three, and amount due, four. So of the five variables that we created, we are going to output four of those. Good. So the first thing that you must have is the name of your algorithm. So in this case, because it is asking us to compute the sales tax, that is what you can name it sales tax, you can name it, let's say it was for a particular company, you could name it, give it the name of the company here. So I'm going to use sales, <laughs> sales tax. So we said now after this is that we have the name, we are going to have our declaration. And we would have identified and counted five variables that we need. So now let us create our variable name. So customer's name, we're going to have C name. Then now purchase amount, we're going to have CMC, CAMC. Then tax code is going to be TC. Then now we're going to compute sales tax. So we're going to have S tax. Then we're supposed to also compute the amount, total amount due. So that's C A M C total amount due. And then that is that. Do we have five? So we have one, two, three, four, five. So we ask the user, we're going to ask the user to enter three things. And we're going to do two computations. That is how we got our five variables. Good? No, sorry. So, so this is our body. And in our body, we're going to have basically the meat of our algorithm. So the first thing now that you need to have, and as I said, there are many ways that you can solve a particular problem. Um, we could have assigned values here. So let's say tax exempt, that's 0%. And then sales tax, state tax. Let's, let's use the whole assignment aspect here. So we have tax exempt. 
it would be zero. So if the user enters zero as the tax code, then they're exempted, zero percent. If they enter one, you're supposed to use three percent. If they enter two, five percent. If they enter three, that's seven percent. All right, we'd have to declare some more variables. Let's get that back. I can do it after. So let's have right. What is it that we want the users to enter? The customer's name. So we're going to have enter customer's name. And the variable name will follow thereafter. So we are going to have read and the variable name that we created, which is C name. Then we're going to have write. We're going to have write. And the second instruction that we want to give to the um, user. So the next one will be the purchase amount. So we want them to enter the purchase amount. Close quotation, close bracket, followed by the variable name that we created for that, which is T A M C. Then we want the tax code. So we're going to have right, enter the tax code, followed by now your variable name for tax code. So we're going to have read, what did we have? CC. All right, so let's move on now. So we need to do our computation of our sales tax, but the sales tax is dependent on the tax code. So now we're going to need an if statement. So if, on bracket, the variable name that we need to check so we couldn't check C name because C name is not going to have any of these codes that we are looking for. We can't use purchase amount because it's not going to have any of these codes that we're looking for. So the variable name that we're going to use is CC. So we want to check if CC is equal to one because that is what the persons will enter. They will not enter tax exempt. They will not enter state sales tax. It says that the tax code has been validated to be one of the following. So it means that the persons must enter a number. Good. So if TC is equal to one, then what should happen? Sorry, zero guys. All right. So if TC is equal to zero, what should happen? The sales tax, which is S tax, is going to be equal to zero. Zero times, because we are calculating the sales tax, times the purchase amount due. So that's T A M C. Good? All right, so here now, we are going to do that for all the codes right up to three. So, Let's go. So it would be else. This one is going to be long. So if CC is equal to one, let me check what the percentage is. The percentage is three. And we said that we have to convert our um, percentage to a decimal. So S stack would be equal now to 0 0.03 times T A M C. So that would be the calculation there. Else if and we continue until we reach up to three. This is equal to two. If that is equal to what the two is coming. So we are going to convert that, so that's 0 0.05 times C A and C. So what if the user enters 3 now? 
and that would be your final art. So if that is going to be equal, what's the percentage there? That's the so that is 0 0.07 times CN. CN. All right, and we said now just like our if statements are like doors. So for each door that we open, because we're going back, we have to close them. So, and we line up each if statement and this with our if. So this would be one there. And that's why I use the tab key because it is easier when you're typing it to have everything lined up because you know exactly the tab there. So that was one, two. So, all right, so that is our ending. So the next part now, so let's follow. So we ask the user to enter name, purchase amount, and tax code. That's right here. Then we check the tax code to compute the sales tax. Now we need to calculate the total amount due. So what we're going to do is that we're going to add the sales tax to the purchase amount to get the total amount due there. So that is T A M C. That's what we're going to have. So T A M C is going to be equal to the sales tax plus the purchase amount, which was T A M C. And that would have been the second computation right here. Now after it said that you are supposed to output which is print the customer's name the purchase amount the sales tax and the amount due so let's do that you can do that in one as one instruction or you can break it up into four different sections that's that part so let us output now as i was saying you can have one output instruction. Let me show you that part. They could have right, open bracket. And we'd output the customer's name. So let's say, what did we have for customer's name? Is it C name? Okay, C name. So you'd have C name, comma. What is it? You would have the C name, open bracket, purchase, amount is and then you would write T A M C comma then you would have open quotes again sales tax is then you would put the variable name here which is S tax comma open quotes and then now you would have total amount due as that is in quotation comma and then you would write T A M C close bracket. So let's check if we have four variables here. So we have one, two, three, four. Good. So what it would output is that John's purchase amount is $20, the sales tax is zero, and the amount due is 20, right? So as I was saying, you can have that, or you can break it up into four, which means that you wouldn't have this part, let me mark this out, because it's not both. You would have that. What you would have is right, um, open bracket, customer's name is, and we can't use the apostrophe because the apostrophe is used for something else in here. Um, you could use it in the algorithm, but you can't use it in the program. And then you would have C name, close bracket. Then you can go back and have right. Same thing, open quote, purchase amount is, God help me. Purchase amount is, and then T A M C close bracket. Same thing again. 
um, say the stuff is. SF. And then total amount due is. So you can have the one output right here, or you can have four different um, output instructions, whichever one you are comfortable with. That is what I would say. I am going to remove the algorithm altogether so that we can do the flow chart. Otherwise, it's going to take up a lot of space and it's going to be too much back and forth and that can cause confusion. So I'm going to delete the solution there. Please remember that this section here that I marked out, I was saying that you can use this option or the option below, it's not both. And then now let's do our flow chart. So with the flow chart, as we said before, the first thing that you're going to have is start. All right, so the first thing we're going to start with is our oval. This is to signify that I'm trying to center it because we're going to have a lot of branching off. And I'm making the images smaller. So I'm going to tell you what I'm putting in there so that you don't try and explain what I'm seeing. Hopefully it's clear to you. So that is start. And please remember that the arrows must have a head on it showing the direction that it is flowing. So using the question by itself now, after start, we are supposed to read these values, right? And once it is that you are reading, we are going to use our parallelogram. Here, you're basically just going to add what is it that we are accepting. As I say, you can break this up into three different um, parallelograms. But I'm just going to use one to accept the three things instead of having three different ones. But if you choose to, it is fine. I'm going to have read, customize name. I'm going to put somewhere for that. Everything is all right. So read, customize name. Then I want to read the purchase amount. So you can use your variable names or you can basically use whatever it is asking in there. So that's the read part right there. All right, so moving on now. We, after that now, it is saying now that we need to compute the sales tax based on the if statement that you have here. Once it is that you have an if, you have a for, or you have a while, you're going to now implement the diamond shape because that is used for decision. <laughs> So in the diamond, as I was saying in the last class, you can write a question or you can write the if structure as you would have it in your algorithm, whichever one it is fine. So here I can write is sales stuff zero, question mark, okay? So if the sales tax is zero, what should happen? Which means that is the condition true? So this is where we were. So here now, if the sales, we're asking if sales tax is equal to one. So we have yes and we have no. All right. So what should happen if it is that the sales tax is one, we're going to do a next computation. So this was what, 3%, it was three, five and seven. 
So we are going to change the zero to 0 0.03, just like with algorithm. So now we're going to have a next diamond because if the sales tax is not equal to one, then it must be equal to two. So is the sales tax now equal to two? Good. So we're going to do the same thing. Let me shorten this so that I have more space. All right, a lean line it is. Lean line for the win. Yes. 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 Embrace the lean line. All right, so now. So that's that. And then the same thing that we need to label. Guys, labeling the lines is important. You must put your true, you must put your false there, you must put your yes, you must put your no to basically signify what is happening. All right, so let me finish on this side. All right, good. So now we have checked if the sales. We're checking if the tax code, the sales tax, sorry, is equal to two. So then we're going to do the same thing with the calculations here. Because this is now going to change to 0 0.05. Now the difference now, is that because we're at the final part where in the in the algorithm good you need to check and ensure that the user is entering zero one two three zero one two three yes now the in the last part where we had if the sales stuff is equal to two and we did our calculation after that we could have had else and had the calculation there, hopefully you're following. However, because we want the user to enter three in itself, because if they enter four, if they enter five, six, seven, it would have done the calculation um, with that tax code, we ask the system to check for the number three. Now in the flow chart, we need not do that part because we can say that if it is not one, if it is not two, the, if it's not zero, one, or two, then it is three. So in this case, now we're not going to have a next diamond, what we're going to have. And if you put it there, it would be fine. You are just going to have the computation that is going to happen. Ooh, that is going to happen next. So that's 0 0.07. Good. So the trick now, the trick is joining all of this, all of this. Now, in the same way where we had our end this, the same thing that we're going to do is just that we don't, sorry guys, it's just that we don't use end this in the flow chart. We use our connectors now, that's what we're going to use. So we're going to merge these two last ones first and then connect it. And we're going to move from this side and we're going to go that way. Let's show you what I mean. So this is now where our connector comes into play. So we are going to put a small circle right here. So basically we're connecting those two. So we're connecting those two so that we can connect everything. So basically now we connect these two 
So we're going to have one line coming from the connector and then we're going to connect it with this one. All right, let's show that part. All right, so we have the connector there. So basically this section now is connected to this section and we're going to connect this section. So we are going to have a line coming from this connector, a line coming from here to merge to our next connector. And that is going to be how we connect everything. So As I say, I cannot draw a straight line to save my life. So that is how we would have connected this. So let me put numbers in this so that we can follow. It is similar now to your ending before. Um, as I was saying, it is going to be similar to your end ifs. It's just that you're not going to write end if in it in your flowchart any at all. So now for your output and your stop, because it is going to flow on a next page. In this case, what we have here, we are basically, let me push down this one. What you do once it spans onto a next page, you take a connector. And that is why the labeling of the connector is important. So in this case, we're going to have B. And coming from that, no, no, it wouldn't be D. In this case, it would be CC. All right, so coming from this now, we are going to have our output. And we said that for our output, we need our parallelogram. We're going to output the customer's name. So customer's name, the purchase amount, the sales tax, and we are supposed to output the total amount due. After you're finished with that, we once we have a start, we must have stop. So that's what we're going to have next. And then I think the stop okay, so is All right, here. This would have been now your, on this side, let me use the, all right, so here now, this is going to be the flow chart here. Now, because it is going on to our next page, we had to use a connector, which is C2 right here, and then we have our output. So basically what we're telling is that it is coming from C and it's not a new connector altogether. Um, this is probably a lot to digest at once.